Brian, this reminds me a lot of like the best stories that I've seen, where this story actually was discovered when you were reporting another story. It came from elsewhere. Tell me about how you came across this. Yeah, so we were actually covering uh, another lawsuit involving the city of Dallas with an apartment complex, and when we were looking up this lawsuit, I actually kind of stumbled upon, saw that the city was involved in some of these other lawsuits, and I was kind of going down the list, and when I saw the address of this self-service car wash, I knew then exactly where this was. You don't have to be a street reporter very long to know the intersection of St. Augustine and Bruton Road. So I mean, you've there's, seen there. You've yeah, seen it we've there. Been, there. been there. We've been yeah. there. We've covered, you know, unfortunately, murders, shootings, you know, just a, a lot of different crime happens there. So looking into the lawsuit and, and reading it, and the, the city is suing this owner of the car wash, saying that he is not doing enough to curb crime in this area. A lot of the crime takes place at the convenience store right there on the corner as well as the South Service car wash next door. And so then we reached out to the owner and, and he told us um, a very different story. I mean, we always talk about there's two sides of a story. Mm -hmm. And he was telling us, hey, I have done stuff and it's not really my responsibility to keep crime off. I've put up fences, I put up cameras, you know, how much more as a business owner am I responsible for to keep crime away? And he bought this as a retirement plan. That was yeah. so ironic to me yeah. that he thought this was going to be some cush gig where he could generate money from this and then it's generating crime. Yeah, he, he's 77 years old, Jerry um, Sleewall. He, he purchased it six years ago and he said, yeah, it was supposed to be kind of their, their nest egg. He was going to have one of his sons kind of operate it. But they really thought it was going to be kind of a, a little bit of a passive income, not a ton of work other than a little um, mechanics going on with the actual car wash. He said that he had no idea really what he was getting into. There was something that he said that really stuck out with me. And it was, I didn't, you know, I bought the car wash. That was what he intended to do. But he said, I didn't buy the crime that yeah. came with the car wash. Yeah. That really resonated with right. me. Now, some will argue six years ago when he bought it, should he have known that there was crime at that, that area? Probably. This isn't a new um, thing here. Crime has been going on for uh, more than a decade here. So yeah. um, should he have been aware? But yes, he, you know, he's buying a business. Um, and he feels like he's taken reasonable steps to keep crime away and he feels like the city is asking some pretty unreasonable steps, including in the lawsuit, they're asking him to hire an armed security guard. And, you know, when you're making 50 cents a wash and your armed security guard is anywhere from 30 to $50 an hour. That adds up. Yeah. That's really expensive. It's just, it's just not, economically, it's just not feasible. Right. And like you said, this is an area that's known to people, both who live there and who don't live there, I checked Facebook, I looked at some of the comments, people know exactly where you're talking about. Yeah. And I know we wanted to share some comments that yeah. people uh, posted. And Manny Vargas was saying, I used to go buy chips and cigarillos there. There is always a crowd there from time to time. When I used to go around the area, note that he said used to go around. Right, right. And it makes you want to be aware of your surroundings when you go to that gas station. Yeah. So clearly this is on his radar. He doesn't even go there anymore. Yeah, and if you, you know, it's very, it's well known. People in the, the neighborhood, even people outside don't know. Um, you even go on to YouTube and you, you can look up and you can see videos of, of fights. A lot, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the people that hang out there, they'll record videos of different fights there. And so it's all over YouTube. So yeah. this, is, this, is not a, mm -hmm. this is not a secret. Um, some of the other people, um, Judy, um, Bankson um, chimed in on, on Facebook and said, I grew up in Pleasant Grove, was a, a nice place, such a shame that, um, such a shame what is happening here. Um, Mendoza Alma wrote, my son goes to one of the, the nearby schools in the area. They do need to clean this up. And, you know, one of the things that we didn't get into um, last night is there's actually a new KIPP Academy mm -hmm. that is, is right there, right across the street. And then Pleasant Grove Elementary School is right down the road on St. Augustine. And so wow. we were there one day when school got out and a lot of these kids are going to the convenience store to, mm -hmm. to buy candy. I mean, we, we all did. And it's just not a, a safe environment. The element that's there mixed with these kids and a lot of neighbors that we talked to said that's kind of a shame because we all grew up where you could walk down yeah. to your neighborhood convenience that's store, scary. get a you know, get a get a pop, get a piece of candy, 
um, and not have to worry about r walking into a drug deal in the middle of the day. And I mean, these are droves of kids potentially. Once school is dismissed, it's not just one trickle. I mean, people get out of these schools and the kids are everywhere. Yeah. And it, me it really makes you wonder what's being done in the area. Uh, I know there is an element of fear here too with some neighbors. I know Marianne Nichols Lewis said this is very scary. I live not too far from there and I have driven around there. Protect the people who live here right now. Uh, so there is a call for change. There is a call for accountability here. Um, and it seems that the majority of people who have weighed in on this story are squarely in the co in the corner of this owner. Right. And usually a lot of times when we get these stories and you look at, at, at Facebook and and I don't know what Facebook represents in terms of the viewers and public opinion, but at least with people that chime in on Facebook, a lot of the time it's it's split. Um, a lot of people saying, "Hey, this business owner needs to do more." You know, that's mm -hmm. kind of what you expect. I would say, 95% of the comments, and we we have well over I think 150 right now, comments. Um, they say that it's the city. The city needs to do Police more. Police need to do more. Yes. Yeah. And it. I mean, and there's a lot of those, um, and even emails. Um, Donna Mayo had sent me an email last night, and she wrote, I don't think it's ever the business owner's fault for crime. No one should have to pay for an armed security guard. That's why we have police officers, to make sure we're safe. The city of Dallas needs to do its job, and that's why we pay taxes. That seems to be a, a sentiment we heard quite a bit. Right. A lot of sympathy for the owner, too. Yeah. I know Rianne Leach said at a 50-cent car wash, he can't be making that much money, which is what you said, from the car wash. Anyway, all the money the city will spend on a lawsuit will just, you know, just buy it from this poor man and bulldoze it. So interesting kind of transfer of money idea there from uh, Rianne. She says it's outrageous to blame him for the problems happening there. Similar sentiment from Sarah Jones. This is heartbreaking. I could see the pain in the man's eyes. These people are really feeling for him. Yeah. Yeah, not his problem that criminals are being criminals. He has complied and did everything that he has been asked to do, which makes me remember the gate that he put up, the guard that was there temporarily. Yeah. What more could a person be doing? Yeah, so some of the things that he's he's done is um, he just recently he put up a gate. He changed his hours. For the longest time, it was open 24 hours. You could go at any time. That's a lot of hours um, to man. The, the city had, and it's a, it's an unmanned. And so, you know, one of the things that the city had requested is that you change your hours. You close it. And so that's something that he's done. He now the car wash closes at 10 p.m. He put up a gate. Um, so at 10 p.m. that gate is closed and locked. He's put up fencing all around. There's even barbed wire on top of some of this fencing. He's added cameras, signs. We counted more than 25 signs, you know, no loitering, you know, no, you know, just kind of warning them, hey, we, you know, this is monitored by cameras, all sorts of things. So he has made effort with the exception of hiring an armed security guard. It seems like he has really done, when you look at the lawsuit and you look at what the city is requesting, he's done all of that until you get down to that armed security guard. And when we talk about how a lot of the people that had commented seemed to be kind of sympathetic towards the owner and, uh, you know, a little upset with the city saying, hey, it's the city's responsibility. Um, Jana, who um, she had chimed in on Facebook and actually said that, Last night after watching the story, she sent the city of Dallas a letter and oh, she kind of no. shared part of that. And it's kind of a lengthy letter, but, um, you know, she writes, excuse me, but I just saw the news story on CBS about the dangerous intersection off St. Augustine. It said you guys are, you guys, and referring to the city, you guys are suing some poor old man and that owns the car wash. How is it the man's fault? And um, she goes on to, to write some more, but... Mm, I wonder if she'll get a response. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, follow up. We'll ask if she, if she does, for sure. That'd be interesting. Speaking of lawsuits, Roman wrote in, and he said, we as taxpayers and citizens should sue the city of Dallas for inadequate police force. And that kind of reminded me of the numbers you found in your story, that the numbers are down for yeah. police over the past few years. Yeah, so the owner had said... You know, he believes, and in their response to the lawsuit, now this is still an ongoing, but you have to file a response, and in their response, they said, hey, this is not the owner's fault that crime here is so out of control. It's actually the, the, the lack of police presence and the lack of police officers. And as, you know, most people know, because it's been in the news over the last couple of years, there's a well-documented shortage of police officers, mm -hmm. patrol officers, not total officers. We're looking at patrol people officers. People who are out there on out the street. Out on the street, people that would be, you know, 
at this street corner, driving by this street corner, we are down in the city 200 patrol officers from, from two years ago. It's a startling number. Yeah. It seems like a lot. Yeah. It feels like a lot, especially I'm sure if you talk to these people, which you have, and they're on the front lines wanting to see more officers yeah. on their street. In this case, we'll just have to see how it plays out. There's a court hearing next week. We're told it's probably going to be more of formality. Mm. Um, so it's going to be kind of later on this spring. But I know a lot of businesses and a lot of neighborhoods are going to keep their eye and see what, what happens. If they're really going to put the onus on this owner or if there's going to be some change, maybe um, there'll be greater police presence.